You're listening to Lore Friendly. I'm your host, Chris Takashi, and with me, as always, is Alice Bell. The slightly tipsy Alice Bell. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing how one bo- glass of wine hits you, like nowadays. I'm getting I, old. I think, that's a, <laughs> I think that's a very appropriate word, tipsy, because you're you're probably like leaning to the side, ready to fall over. I, I was pretty much falling over when I was watching Bake Off, which is mm-hmm. a reality show that we have over here that's about baking. It's the <laughs> purest form of entertainment. I have not heard of it. I haven't watched as much reality TV <laughs> lately as as I should. <laughs> I do feel like it's an important part. I want part to make you watch Drag Twilight. Race. Mm-hmm. I want to make you watch Drag Race. The only reality show that I've been watching consistently is is this show called MTV The Challenge. <laughs> Have you ever What's seen that? What's that? I've never heard of it. It's when they put these reality stars and they make them do these like little athletic type challenges or like spelling bees, all these like little kind of like competitive activities or something for money. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> and it- I'd go for that. I'd audition for that it's show. It's my favorite show in the world. It's just, I mean, because there's like all this like backstabbing and drama and yeah, stuff like that. So well, this is why you'd love Drag Race so it's much. Ca- it's kind of like Survivor, I guess. <laughs> it's like Survivor, only the contestants are people from like the real world. You remember the real world, right? No. No? <laughs> okay. What is what is the real world? I Never mind. live in Forget this it. little hole. Forget it. I'm just in, old. In the student world. The real world is probably the first reality TV show ever, I think. I'm not sure, though. Really? Yes. It started off... Like, was there the same kind of, like, drama and backstabbing and stuff? No, no. It it wasn't competitive, though. It was just you put, like, 12 strangers (laughs) into a building and make them live together and film it. It was, like, the original concept. I can't believe you've never heard of the fucking real world. It just sounds like such a boring show. Like, who would want to sit down and watch 12 people live their lives together? At the time, it was novel, though. See, now we have them go through all these, like, crazy competitions and stuff and make them, like, do spelling bees and puzzles and (laughs) and make them jump off buildings and do all this kind of crazy shit for money. Because now we figured out that is more exciting. But at the time... (laughs) <laughs> At the time, the fact that we were filming real people and filming their lives seemed like an interesting concept. You know what I find amazing is that like one of the most popular reality TV shows is called Big Brother, aka that thing that we were warned in 1948 mm. is a very, very bad thing. Yeah, and see, all of those shows are kind <laughs> of derived from the original concept, which was just filming people. And seeing what happens. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really nosy. And reality TV sh- shows give me like, it's trash telly, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's like popcorn for the mind, more or less. It's just yeah. It's not gonna be good for you. <laughs> it's not culturally enlightening. Yes, well, it could be culturally <laughs> or intellectually enlightening if you're just like interested in that subset of people, um, doing you know, whatever that what is they do. They do. Yeah. <laughs> I guess from a like you could look at it from an intellectual standpoint, but that's not how I'm watching it. <laughs> no, I don't really. I don't. When I watch reality TV, I watch it for mindless drama. Yes. And nothing else. I if if I want to look at Shakespeare or something like that, then I will go off and I'll read some Shakespeare. If I want to switch off and just chill out and get engrossed in the drama, mm. then I'll watch reality TV. Yeah. There's nothing to apologize for. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like people might judge us for enjoying reality TV because I feel like the internet is very, very against this kind of entertainment because it's just not intellectual. (laughs) Well, it's the whole concept of guilty pleasure. No, it's just a pleasure. There's nothing to feel guilty about. You know what a guilty pleasure is? What? Liking Britney Spears. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Even that is nothing... Like, I would say a guilty pleasure... Or Naughty's Rock. A guilty pleasure is something that <laughs> oh. actively harms you. Um, so, like, drugs. Yes. And alcohol. Yes. And well, possibly, <laughs> possibly, Limp Biscuit. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like I feel like drinking alcohol is less stigmatized than watching reality TV. Mm. Even though drinking alcohol does do actual harm to you. Mm. Yeah, probably because 
more people do it. I don't know. I I don't know. I feel like a lot of people watch reality TV. Yeah, that's true. I like to make drinking games whilst I watch reality TV. I combine the two. <laughs> so you're doubling your guilty pleasure. Yeah. I'm doubling mm-hmm. down on the guilt. My favorite game at the minute is the Great British Bake Off drinking game. Mm-hmm. It's very wholesome family entertainment, but it's full of like little um like innuendos and stuff like that. So what you have to do is is you have to drink every time there's an innuendo. You have to drink every time someone fucks up. You have to drink every time someone's down on their knees checking in the oven. You have to drink every time someone uses alcohol mm-hmm. in a recipe. And if someone uses gin, then you have to down your drink because gin is Mary Berry's favourite, who is like one of the hosts. It gets you fucked up every time. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine there's a lot of usages of the word moist. Your Soggy word. bottoms. No. I have still not said that on the podcast, and I never will. The only way you will make me say it is if you put it into a script. Mm, I should do that. Oh, <laughs> shit. No. Please, no. <laughs> um. Yeah, but it's been a relatively slow couple of months, I guess, from the news perspective. Well, it's only been... It has, has it only been like a month since we... Last recorded. Yeah, I feel, we've I feel been like sort of like digging through the bottom of the bin though, trying to find topics though, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. It's like I was telling you, it's just if only the Cincinnati Zoo would just shoot another gorilla, we'd have something to talk about. <laughs> but We already referenced Harambe on the bloody playthrough. Mm. Go check it no, out. No, but that's why I'm, if they shoot <laughs> another gorilla, then we have another person. We don't have then to talk about Then we have something Harambe. relevant that we yes. can jump on. We're not sort of jumping off the last gorilla. We're talking about the current dead gorilla. Scene, yeah, so. the fr- current gorilla. Maybe it has to be a different animal. Yeah. So uh, maybe if they shot like, like a tiger. Yeah, a tiger. A tiger is a combination of both sort of cuddly and dangerous that would make a good yeah. target. Yeah. So what would what would we name the tiger that gets shot? I don't know. It probably already has a name. Tony. <laughs> I never like Frosties. Let's shoot Tony the tiger. Mm. He is probably poisoning or hurting a lot more kids than Harambe ever did. They're great. <laughs> He's probably doing a lot more damage to children than Harambe ever could even dream yeah. of. So. <laughs> yeah, I'd be... Yeah, someone kill off Tony the Tiger, then we'll have something to talk about, because we are literally coming up with shit on the fly. Mm. Like, there's been no big game releases. Like, this time last year, we had Metal Gear Solid. We had Undertale. We had, like... A couple of months worth of content to talk about. What do we have to talk about at the minute? Deus Ex that I can't play. Um, in, <laughs> in fairness, yeah. In fairness, there have been games that have come out and DLC that has come out. You just don't have the computer to play them. Yeah. Right? That's the yeah. $50 goal, like, guys. Nuka World. <laughs> Nuka World did come out. I mean... <laughs> I think I just find it amazing how I've voiced all these lines for Fallout 4 and I have no fucking clue what's going on. I think that helps. It helps the performance. No, I, I don't know if it helps performance as much as it helps actual delivery of the lines. Um, because, well, you and Muda Fruger, I don't think you've played Fallout 4. I can't speak for him, but I think that's why it's easier for you to do the DLC lines, whereas Natalie is still trying to finish Far Harbor, uh. and she doesn't want to spoil herself and read ahead, so she has to kind of finish Far Harbor and Nuka World before she can go ahead and record. And so, so it there's... means we we can just pump out lines, <laughs> yeah, exactly, endlessly. Because you're not worried about spoilers because you're not yeah. going to play the game, so it's a little bit. Different. I know, I know, it's something about cola and robots. <laughs> yeah, you're, that, that you're pretty much really, sums it up, really, right? Yeah, <laughs> you summed it up. You've spoiled it for everyone. Souls, guys, no that seems to be a habit of mine. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to put major spoiler tags in front of that. Yeah. Accurate description of Redacted. both DLCs. <laughs> <laughs> Coke and robots. Um, actually, that sounds like a pretty fun game. <laughs> <laughs> Coke and robots, yeah. I would totally play that game. There probably is something called Coke. I'm going to Google it. That's probably a band name more than a video game name, I'd say. Coke and robots. Suicide, a Coca-Cola drinking robot makes social justice statement. It's from Gizmodo. I have no idea what Gizmodo is. Is it like well, a satire it's, site? It's, it's making fun of social justice people. I feel like, yeah. But it's from 2006. Purdue, social justice. Oh. 
Like, why would you be against social justice review? I don't understand the term as a pejorative. Um, Gosh darn feminazis. Yeah, see, taking well, all well, that, our manly, manly that, rights. That makes a little bit more sense to me if it's you're sticking the word Nazi in there. Nazi has an evil con- <laughs> connotation, right? Yeah. You're trying to make fun of somebody by calling them a Nazi. You're not complimenting them. I don't. I don't get yeah. social justice as a pejorative. You're saying you're for equal rights. I. Oh no. Yeah, you I would person. love to be called a warrior. <laughs> I would love to be called a social justice warrior. That sounds fucking badass. <laughs> But the word warrior, I guess that's the condescending part. Like, the like, internet warrior, keyboard warrior. Mate, I have level 21 uh, verbal abuse attacks. I'm a social justice warrior, <laughs> you man. You fight with your keyboard. Right. <laughs> and the funny thing is, like, keyboard warriors are probably the scariest warriors. If you hit someone over the face with a keyboard, it would hurt. Yeah, but keyboard warriors are scary. They can hack into your, you know, your fucking bank account. Yeah, it's like, nothing like, to, know. like... Stick your nose up that. Yeah. <laughs> a real warrior with a guy with a fucking battle axe? I am not afraid of that. I'm just going to lock my door and call the cops. <laughs> but a keyboard warrior? That shit's fucking scary. A keyboard warrior could just get into all your private shit and yeah. steal all your monies. Yeah. Oh, did I <laughs> did I show you the spam email yes, that I yes, got? Yes, yes, you did. Was, uh, it, was <laughs> it the Nigerian prince? You just need to fix yeah, your spam Yeah, well, filter. it was kind of an... Well, I've not had one of these in literal years no, you have they just don't go to your inbox they go to your spam well box. i've not had one that's got into my inbox in literal years mm. let me see if i can find it you know that's more of a reflection on your email client server right yeah what, what are you using you're using hotmail yeah so see, there you go there you go although i i use gmail and i've gotten spam emails like every now and then too so it's not like gmail is like yeah a great impenetrable force it's the Nigerian princes know how to get around Gmail, too. Yeah. Do you know what the best thing is? What is the best she thing? She was called Glory Hole. <laughs> <laughs> because that uh, my fr- is a princely or a prin- princessly name. Yeah. It's Miss Glory Hole. God. Yeah. <laughs> Queen Glory Hole to you. <laughs> Um, do, uh, you you want to know what my favorite line is? No, go ahead. Um, if you can be of any assistance, to this I will like you to tell me what you will take from <laughs> me out of the total fund, as your charge to assist me get this fund out of this chaos nation. <laughs> <laughs> Another great band name, I think. chaos nation. <laughs> it sounds like when the fire nation attacks. <laughs> I love spam. I used to get it all the time. You know, you know, when I was like 13, 14, like everyone had each other's email addresses because we used MSN. Mm. God, that makes me sound old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we used yeah. to use MSN, so that like everyone MSN had... MSN is old, yeah. No, it's not. But but like we all used to um, like send on chain mails and things like that. So like when that was going down, that was basically like... A scam to like get as many working email addresses as possible. Right. And I got loads then, mm. and it was really confusing. Missed- I had one person email me like as a refugee, and that was pretty heartbreaking for thirteen-year-old me, because <laughs> I told dad about it because I got a bit scared. <laughs> and, and he was like, "Alice, you do realize that that is a spammer? They're trying to take all your money. <laughs> like, I don't have any money to take. I'm only thirteen. Well, actually, it would have been a bit higher, but I'm only 13. I don't have any money Mm. to take. (laughs) Is that what you sound like? Well, have you heard the difference between my voice at 18 and my voice at 21? It's quite big. (laughs) So, like, when I was 13, I was, like, speaking an octave higher. When I was 10, only dogs could hear Uh, me. That must have been quite difficult for your parents. Did you have a dog to translate? Well, I did have a dog, but he wasn't very clever. Mm. He just kind of, like, looked at you, because he never barked. He never communicated with you. He just, like, looked at you with his baleful eyes. <laughs> I'm a dog. Hello. It's probably because you were screaming at him at a pitch that only he could hear. I was like, God damn it, <laughs> shut up, woman. Um, yeah, so, there's no dead gorillas <laughs> in the news to talk about, um, but... Speaking of old news, did you like that transition? 
Yeah. You wanted to talk Great. about Pokemon Go? Is that what you wanted to talk about? <laughs> Speaking oh, of news Pokemon. that's been dead for like three or four months now. Like two or three. Don't over exaggerate. I think you're the only one still playing that game. No, I'm not. I went to the, the gym yesterday. The fad has passed was... already. No, no. Right. <laughs> I w- um, I've got a lot of gyms in my local area because I live in a city. And um, like there's one opposite my house. It's great. But um, I was walking to the gym on Saturday, and it was quite embarrassing. I walked past one of the gyms, and there was a group of, like, ten-year-olds hanging around attacking this gym. And I was like, this is my kin. These are the other people who are playing this game. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I only play it because I love the satisfaction of naming them stupid things. Like, let me get up my list of Pokemon names because it's really quite impressive. And you, <laughs> also, there's one outside my local... There's a Pokestop outside my local pub. I like so doing I that too drink. when I was 10 years old and playing at the arcade. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Shut up. It's like, ooh, right, I, could so... name, I could name this high score ASS. <laughs> that spells ass. <laughs> I'm 10 years old. Well, I'm like a 12-year-old at heart, so... Mm. Right, so my Squirtle is called UTI. As in urinary tract infection. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so funny. starting off, starting off good, and then I've got Shakespeare pun. It's not all vulgar. Mm-hmm. Um, my sand shrew is called Taming of the uh... after the Shakespeare play. Hey, <laughs> um. You'll never guess what I called my meow. No, I, I don't think I can. Is it ass? It's called pussy. <laughs> Close enough. It's a cat. Because it's a cat. Uh... <laughs> um, I've got a couple named after drag queens because, of course, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, my Bulbasaur is called Bud, as in four twenty smoke weed every day. Uh... Okay. My Zubat is called Deep Throat <laughs> because its mouth is open really <laughs> wide. <laughs> And it looks like it could take something to the back of the right, throat Right, well. a joke every <laughs> ten-year-old could appreciate. I know. And do you want to know what my onyx is called? Is it Uranus? You know, the big rock Pokemon. No. Don't be so vulgar. It's called Hardon. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so immature. But it's just so funny being able to take over a gym with my hard on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I lack one in real life, so right, 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 this is right. what I've been reduced to. <laughs> oh, there's a Pokemon nearby. <laughs> is that all you do? Is that you just pick up Pokemon and just name them? Is that the game? Yeah, and I walk around as well and hatch some eggs. Because you can hatch eggs. So you can hatch a 2k egg, a 5k egg, or a 10k egg. Oh, it's kind of like... Um... A real life version of No Man's Sky, then, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you get Pokemon out of it oh, okay. instead of shitty resources, <laughs> and you get to name them funny things. You can name planets. Which I suppose funny you can things. do in No Man's Sky as well, but yeah. it's not quite as entertaining because no one can see what you've named your funny things because the online servers are stupid. Whereas on Pokemon Go, when you take over a gym. Everyone can see that you've taken over the gym with your hard on <laughs> or with your oral. And all the 10 year olds could laugh. Exactly. I feel like, and like on campus, there are a couple of like, there are still a couple of students who play it. I play it quite subtly. Oh, okay. Like, because you can turn your phone upside down and just leave your finger on the screen and it turns the screen off. Mm. So you can just play it. And it just looks like you're walking your phone because I don't look like the same. Uh, so you're cool. feeling guilty about it. This like, is what we talked about. You're not supposed to feel guilty. Yeah, Pokemon <laughs> Go is another guilty pleasure. <laughs> no, it has been weird though because when I've been up on my phone, like, ca- catching something, like, Nottingham's quite a busy place. Mm. And the walk to my university, which is, like, about 20 minutes or so, it's on a main road. So, like,. As I've been walking past, I've had like people in vans honking at me saying, Are you playing Pokemon <laughs> Go? 
And I was like, that's weird. That's just creepy. So, you don't do yeah, that. Is, so is it embarrassing when all the other kids have to go home because their parents are calling them and then you get, you're alone you have to stick around because you're the only adult? No, I, I, I don't let any of the children know that I'm playing. I pretend that I'm too cool for oh, this okay. shit. I just walk with my head held high as I'm going somewhere. You know, you so might like be able to lake. charge people like babysitting hours or something. Make a business out of it. <laughs> I would not trust myself with children. <laughs> I know. That's the worst part about like being around children is because children are like easily affected by anything. They're easily influenced and like you could like ruin some child's life just by being yourself. So I just I don't want children around me at yeah. any time. God. <laughs> just stay away. It's like I, n I, c I can filter myself around my niece and my cousins and that's about it. When it's someone else's kids, like, I was just walking to university today, and it was just as school came out, so about five, uh, about three, half three, and I was walking, just talking with my friend, and we were talking about, god, I don't know, but we were effing and blinding, because that's what we always do, mm. and this mum just turned around and gave us a disgusted look, and I was like, shit, there was a child there, <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I said shit, oh fuck, I said shit. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing, though. It's so weird how parents get hung up on that kind of stuff. Because, like, I mean, I was probably swearing and cursing when I was, like, five or... I'm not... Kindergarten? No, not kindergarten. Second grade, probably, is when you usually start swearing. That's, like, what, seven seven years old, eight years old? God, that's so You're disgusting. You're learn it anyway. I was swearing at at least nine. nine. Yeah. It's God. not like we knew what we were talking about either. Where I was talking about, like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck that pussy or something like that. <laughs> You're like you're yeah. like seven years old. You don't even know what a pussy is. You're just like saying this shit because it sounds. <laughs> it's like when you, it's like when you listen to to songs and you're singing along to it. You just <laughs> don't realize what it's on about. Like the amount of shit that I used to sing. Yeah. Um, like, um, I used to like Atomic Kitten a lot when I was younger, mm. and I sang this oh at a talent competition. I was nine, and I sang this song called Hole Again. <laughs> And one of the lines is, um, you still turn me on. You can make me whole again. <laughs> and I sang that in front of all these parents. <laughs> and nobody told me that I shouldn't. Yeah, you should have just... I just kept on at it. In front of the whole school. I did win the talent competition. I won a box yeah. of chocolates. It was great. If only you had a more healthy hobby, like Pokemon Go. You could have yeah. just told them about your heart on instead. <laughs> I am so immature. I should not be allowed <laughs> to play on these games. Yeah. At least I haven't called anyone Farty McFartface. Mm. That's something you think children say, but no. It's more like yeah. fuckity McFuckface. <laughs> yeah. You want to you wanna know what I name my Pokemon? I made it bum. <laughs> See, that's... <laughs> I'm so naughty. <laughs> That's something an adult would think a child would say. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's kind of like when... In reality, it's dickheads like me. Yeah. <laughs> Naming them hard on. <laughs> so, anything else you've been playing recently? Um, I haven't been playing anything recently, but I would like to discuss the Metal Gear <laughs> okay. Survive shit. Yeah, Just that's... in general, like, oh my god. Yeah, it did what? look like they just took the Metal Gear game and put zombies in it. <laughs> I us. have never been so flabbergasted by a trailer in my life. <laughs> I I don't know what I was expecting Konami to do with the Metal Gear franchise after Kojima left. Hmm. I, I don't think I was expecting that. Well, people like zombies, people like Metal Gear, so just put zombies people in Metal Gear. People liked zombies ten years ago <laughs> when Left 4 Dead came out. Yeah. It, it's kind of getting a bit drawn out, to be honest. I yeah. think they're a bit late on the bandwagon. No, the bandwagon is already broken and abandoned. Nobody's there. The bandwagon is full of zombies, and maybe that's where they got the idea. I mean, zombies have been oh, just... overdone for like the last oh. five, six years. Uh, it's just Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Like, for starters, the the cinematics in the trailer are worse than the cinematics in MGS5. Mm. Like, MGS5 had a lot of flaws, but at least the cinematics looked good. The faces just look so flat. 
Like, it didn't look like it had been rendered properly. Right. And a parallel universe with zombies. <laughs> That is the last thing that I associate with Metal Gear. At least make it nano machines. <laughs> there has always been this sort of, I don't know, fantastical element to Metal Gear, but it's never been so blatant. Oh, yeah. It's never been so blatantly zombies. Yeah. It's just, uh, like, it's an excuse oh to put God. zombies in the game, more or less. So, I don't know. I mean, it's just zombies in general. I mean, you could call them whatever you want, but they're zombies. They're just, that's what they are. Yeah. So. All right. Do you, do you want to, to, to know what we know about the game so far? Uh, um, sure. Why this not? Is, this is coming from the September 17th demo from the Tokyo Game Show. The summary on the Wikipedia is a whole two sentences long. Oh, can I drink something before? <laughs> can I drink some alcohol? Down it. Um, yeah. Well, I have to go get it. <laughs> oh, effort. Right. The demo revealed that the Fulton Cannon will make an appearance. That the player can optionally retrieve the creatures for resource building. They can acquire resource building. That they can heal themselves on the main menu. Holy shit, it's not like that's been done since Metal okay. Gear Solid 3. Can we talk about the word <laughs> creatures? I mean, if there was ever a word that was more blander than zombie... <laughs> It's got to be creature. It's like, oh no, these aren't zombies. These, these are. <laughs> these are. These are things. things. Yeah. <laughs> it's like at least the these Last of Us. <laughs> at least the Last of Us get, called them clickers or something. Yeah. Like they try to give the zombies a name that had more personality. Like, oh, they click. Let's call them clickers. They make clicking yeah. noises. Um, Cordyceps. Yeah, creatures. There is no more blander word. For a zombie in but the English dictionary. Creature. Yeah. That is when you are oh completely out of ideas. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Let's just name our protagonist Soldier Man while we're at it. <laughs> Isn't that what most games do, pretty much? Right. Like, like the protagonist, sometimes in like these first-person shooters, they're not very well fleshed out. Hmm. You have like the most generic soldier man name <laughs> anyway that you might as well just call them soldier man. <laughs> Actually, you're right. That would kind of be funny in an ironic <laughs> sort of way. You know what? If if they called the protagonist shol s shoulder man, soldier man, <laughs> soldier man, all <laughs> no, all wouldn't be forgiven because I cannot take <laughs> this sacrilege of the Metal Gear Solid name. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been so disgusted in a game. And there's been a lot of games out that have just like not hit the mark. In fairness though, yeah, yeah I I do think Soldier Man if they called it if they called him Soldier Man, I would actually consider playing it cuz I would think that would, they would have enough self-awareness and irony to make the game interesting. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like um it's satire, isn't it? Like <laughs> if they did like what Saints Row do, Saints the Saints Row series does, and right. like, take the absolute piss out of all these tropes, then it could almost be forgiven. But the the trailer implied that it's gonna be super serious, guys. Like this is a super serious yeah. <laughs> zombie adventure, <laughs> creature adventure. <laughs> Anything satirical about the name creature? They're like, oh, creature. That's so scary, so mysterious. It could be anything. <laughs> It's a creature. <laughs> no, no, zombies. no. It's zombies. <laughs> no, doctor. I believe these are zombies. No, no, they're, they're creatures. They could, they could do all sorts of they're weird alien creatures. things. They're from a parallel universe. Who knows what that means? No, no. And they're mindless. <laughs> Did you know that they're mindless? <laughs> no, doctor. I believe these are zombies. These are straight run-of-the-mill <laughs> zombies. The same kind you'll find in any fiction book from the 1960s. Like 70s, Left 80s. for Dead did it <laughs> so much better. Left 4 Dead did the cooperative zombie survival <laughs> better than anyone could ever hope to. Like, they nailed the formula. And... <laughs> I, I just... Do you want to hear some more of the features? Again, I need a drink before we do this. Can, can I Can I seriously start drinking some, like, yeah, hardcore alcohol? Yeah, go get a alcohol? drink. Okay, I'm <laughs> going to get some a shout when you're now. back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what have you got? What have you got? <laughs> I have got some whiskey here. I'm going Aww. to take a shot because <laughs> I need to drink drink to the death we of the Metal Gear <laughs> franchise. We still need to do a drunk <sighs> cast at some point. I feel like we should oh, do a drunk cast. 
My throat is not used to drinking <laughs> alcohol. Hopefully Konami won't make any more Metal Gear games or I won't die of alcohol poisoning. You, you know, like the Halloween episode that we did mm. two years ago where we had to eat really weird Kit Kats when we got questions wrong and right. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I feel like we need to do that uh, with alcohol. shots. Okay. So, yeah. So, submit your questions <laughs> for me and Chris to ask each other. And we'll get drunk yeah. for your pleasure. Yeah, let me let me pour out <laughs> a little liquor. Do the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Have you just bought the bottle? Do the, with you? <laughs> do the, do the Metal Gears of years past. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want to go to the fridge and get the rest of my wine, but it was expensive wine, and by expensive I mean it cost five quid. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> but thankfully, your wine habit is now supported by Patreon. Yeah, it is. But, but before we, we transcend over to the Patreon topic, we need to finish off these features, because <laughs> oh, yes, that's why you took yes. the shots. <laughs> I was trying to avoid it, but go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me the features. <laughs> Did you know that the player can develop various things from collected resources? Oh, really? Wonderful. <laughs> like every survival game ever. <laughs> that's, and, that's such a unique feature. And, I'm glad they thought of it. How original. Um, and did you know that the players can also split up? Like, who has heard of a multiplayer game where people can split up? It's transcendent. I mean, this is this is just full of unique and original ideas. I can't quite believe it. <laughs> Does it also have a soundtrack? Oh, it might. I don't know. That would be really breaking some new ground. Does it have crouching? You know what? Does it have <laughs> jumping? Because I know a lot of games don't quite have jumping in it. You know, I didn't think it could get any more original than creatures, but they just keep topping themselves. Basically, this is going to be a complete shit show. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking forward to crying. The thing about these games is usually what they are is they're just a bunch of like you know, randomly thrown out ideas, like, coddled together. But what they do, the sneaky thing they do, is they'll put just enough nostalgia in there. Just enough nostalgia juice in there to kind of just hit those little, like, you know, what, what do you call it, dopamine centers yeah. in your brain? Just enough to make you think it's a Metal Gear game. Like the sound you make when you pick up an item, that... But they didn't even do that in The Phantom so. Pain! Well, we're, not ta we're talking about a game that is... Past post Kojima that is trying to capitalize right. We're talking about a post Kojima the... game, and so they this just kind of shit. put in these little sound effects that are Metal Gear. They'll put in maybe like the the sound that you make when you like answer the codec calls or whatever, or the sound that you make when um when an enemy sees you. That bleep sound, the exclamation point above their head. That bleep sound. Yeah, yeah. That I so perfectly captured. Um, I think I yeah. did it better. S <laughs> <How's that>? <laughs> <laughs> you just want to evoke that little bit of nostalgia where it's like, yeah, actually, this is this is exactly what I looked for. This is what I wanted. <laughs> I think that's what's going to be in the next Zelda game, too. It's just it's like, open world, this is capturing the 8-bit game, the same feelings as the 8-bit game, and then, boom, zombies. Out of nowhere, zombies. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like an, an abusive relationship. It pulls you in with the hope that... Oh, this is maybe going to appeal to my childhood. And then it just smacks you over the face with zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Mass Effect Andromeda has come out with a new trailer. And along with the trailer, they've kind of released a few tidbits of information. Uh, you're going to play... Two protagonists, a brother and a sister. Kind of like Assassin's Creed, not looking so hot. <laughs> it's going to have more, I guess, gray choices is what they're saying. Uh, shades of gray instead of black and white. Instead of, re no, red and blue. Red and blue, yeah. I know that much about Mass Effect to know <laughs> that the choices are red and blue. Yeah, instead of choices where you press red and then Shepard punches a female reporter <laughs> in the face. 
I mean, that's the thing about you can have <laughs> you can have positive and negative choices, but please, when I press the negative choice, please don't have my character punch <laughs> a female reporter in the face. No, that's <laughs> all I want when I choose the negative choice. I just want to punch people in the face. <laughs> That is obviously <laughs> what morally corrupt people do. They just punch everyone that they see. There's no black and white about it. Like, if I am annoyed at someone, then what am I going to do? Am I going to make a slightly snide remark about them? No, I'm going to punch <laughs> them in the fucking face. And if I'm a good character, then of course I'm going to kiss their yeah, ass yeah. and give them the police. Yeah, you're just going to get on the ground and just start blowing them. <laughs> <laughs> just start... <laughs> I think that was the most disappointing part about Mass Effect. Not the fact that when you press the red option that they'd punch people in the face. It's that when you press the blue option... You couldn't suck people's dicks. Yeah, you didn't just start blowing people <laughs> at random. That was... I mean, if you're going to give me polarizing you know, choices, you got to have to go to the limit on the positive aspects as well as the negative. There is probably a mod for that. Yeah. If not, there should be fellatio mod maybe that's your task when andromeda comes no. out make the fellatio yeah. mod maybe that's why i'm not on the hot files i need to make more put more blowjobs into the game yeah it's blowjobs boobs and boob armor mm. that that is the modding the holy trinity yeah. of destiny <laughs> the holy trinity the triforce of modding yes. <laughs> is boobs boobs and boob armor mm. Right. <laughs> well, technically, I guess you could just say boobs and boob armor. That would be a triforce right there. And sex mods. Mm. Because there's anything to do because with sex. there are two breasts. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> oh, I'm so witty. I know. That's why I'm a top oh, file dear. of the month. <laughs> <laughs> are you actually top file of the month? Uh, I think I was for last month. I don't know how it is. Oh, cool! Hey! We are top file of the I month. Wish yeah, cause, cause I am obviously Cause one it is who a does all the work. Effort <laughs> to get there. Yeah, that's the thing. It's more like at this point, it's more like been there, done that. We don't do this for Nexus endorsements because they're mostly useless. Um, you know what's not useless? What our wonderful Patreons. Yes, that was that was a smooth transition. That was smooth. <laughs> Right, so is is this time to do the shout outs? Oh, did you get a reward for it? Um, yeah, I've got a couple of I, well, I've got a five dollar donation and I've got a ten dollar donation, and my five dollar donation is, um, podcast shout out, and my ten dollar donation is all of the swearing <laughs> that I do whilst I record, mm. because well, as you, you know, say... I swear a lot in the recordings. You should say that today's podcast is sponsored okay. by. Well, today's pump. I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my headphone fell out. Um, today's podcast is sponsored by my dad. <laughs> oh, good job, Alice's dad. He gave dad. me five dollars. <laughs> I'm so happy. And it's also sponsored by. A special mention has to go to John, who was incredibly generous with his ten dollar donation. Like my, I had to change my ten dollar donation pledge. The, uh, the whatever, whatever you call it, the thing that you give them, the gift that you give them when they give you a certain, like, cause, cause originally it was half an hour of me crying down the microphone because I'm not worthy. Because I didn't think that anyone <laughs> would sponsor me that much. And then he did. Which just goes to prove there are some really generous souls out there. Yeah. So if you donate $10 a month, you can access exclusive outtakes from both the podcast and recording So session. obviously that's what we're known for. The podcast, not the mods. <laughs> but yeah, thanks patrons for helping fund our work. Yay, money! <laughs> Right. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, we've recorded for like an hour. All right. Tune in next month when we discuss getting drunk. The dead tiger that was shot by the Cincinnati Zoo. How <laughs> dare they shoot that tiger? How dare they shoot Tony, damn it? Why would you do that? He had so much to live for. Poor guy. 
But yeah, that's it for this episode of Lore Friendly. Um, Say goodbye, Alice. Goodbye, guys. (laughs) All right. Bye.